Welcome back to the Cockpit Top Mock Studio fans. After a previous video on familiarizing ourselves with the B2 switches and controls, we're moving next onto the avionics side of the Stealth Bomber. As mentioned previously, the B2 has an extensive avionics suite, consisting of an EFB, four MFDs on each side, the CID, and two DEPs. We'll be covering all of this in this video. We'll first move to the left side of the flight deck to take a look at the electronic flight bag, or EFB. The EFB contains customization options for the B2, mainly meant for the cold and dark state. Battery power is required to operate the MFD, so I'm going to turn on the flight control battery and the utility battery at this time, and then I can flick the top switch to turn on the EFB. There are two tabs that you can select from at the top of the EFB, in-op and options. By its very nature, in-op is inoperative, so we're just going to look at options for now. Let's start from the bottom first, as these are items that are good for the cold and dark state especially. Uh, the air start cart will toggle a visible air start cart outside the aircraft. Not really functional at this time, but it is a nice visual. The ground power unit is the same and will also allow for external power. There's a visual fire extinguisher, maintenance scaffolds, munitions loader and carts, and then a custom ground tug, again, for visuals. And then looking up from that, you have the air crew toggle, making the pilot and mission commander visible in the cockpit. The pilot will spawn headless, but you can click the neck to toggle his head on for screenshots. And then if you click the same position, it should remove it again, but you may need to adjust your camera slightly to get access to it. The position of the mission commander can also be customized, with three options to choose from. Seated is the default position, and has your mission commander at rest in the co-pilot seat to your right. You can also choose rest, which will place him on the floor behind you, laying down as he ponders the questions of the universe and all that are held within them. Or, my personal favorite, you can choose toilet to place him on the aforementioned lavatory in the back of the B2. How delightful. Weapons can be toggled visually at the next button, assuming you have the Marketplace Weapons mod installed, which is available on the TMS Discord and website, linked in the description. RBF tags are the remove before flight fixtures that are meant to keep the aircraft safe when the aircraft is on the ground and turned off. And then finally, wheel chocks can be toggled below that. The EFB also has an optional G3000 display, which is found by clicking the second switch from the top. Uh, this has been added for consumer usability, but due to its nature, it's not going to be covered in this tutorial. You can likely find tutorials for it available on YouTube. You can, however, use the third switch to zoom in and out on the map. For the MFDs and the rest of the systems, we need AC power to turn on the screens. Our DC power battery won't cut it. For this case, I will simply turn on the external power with this click button. Caution. Having Caution. the GPU enabled in the EFB is not required, but I have it enabled because it's a fun little visual effect and I like the realism. Anyway, the MFDs have a numerous number of pages and I'll try to cover them all in this. We're going to first look at the right MFD and then cover the top row of selections. The engine page has all the data on your four engines, including, but not limited to, N1, N2, TBT, and fuel flow. ECS contains information on the environmental control system. As you can see, our bomb bay temperature, for example, is currently 76 degrees. The CASP button on the left and then the CASP bit button in the bottom right do not do anything at this time. Electrics shows our amp and voltage information on the aircraft. As you can see, we have power flowing from the external power, but neither from the four engines and generators, respectively. FCH is both hydraulics and flight controls. Our hydraulic pressure is currently zero PSI, which is to be expected with the engines off. And then the FCS page here is mostly cosmetic. The only time something would show up here on the real aircraft is if you had a fault in your flight controls. It does not show live detection information like the F-22. Failures are not currently modeled for the FCS, so there's not really a practical use for this page at this time. And then finally, fuel will display all fuel on board the aircraft, similar to the fuel management console. Visuals of how much each tank is filled and a readout in thousands of pounds are available, along with showing how they are connected. Finally, looking quickly at the bottom row, we have avionics, a static page with some example avionics configurations, which are non-functional. And then stat, which will bring us over to the left MFD. The STAT, or STATUS, page gives us a lot of general information about what the aircraft is doing. Mainly, your crew alerting system messages are on this page. I have a lot of them on right now because the aircraft is powered down, but usually only see about four in flight. To the left of the CAST messages, you have some engine information, your M1 percentages for engines 1 through 4, and then a thrust gauge located between them. Below this, you have your total fuel flow for all four engines in pounds per hour, and then the total amount of fuel on board the aircraft. Then, some flight control data on the bottom left. You have readouts and visuals for the positions of the two drag rudders, 
and then two primary flight control services. You also have your landing gear indication here, in this case three greens down and locked. Most of the buttons located on the sides of this MFD are inoperative, as they are more combat oriented and not been fully developed yet for the aircraft, plus they are highly classified. TFR and HSD are currently only functional options. TFR will give you a FLIR-like display, similar to what you have in the F-22 currently, and a heads-down display will be overlaid on top with speed, altitude, and other information. HSD will take you to the aircraft's HSI, which is currently selected on the bottom MFD already, so we might as well just move there now. The HSD is going to be your primary navigation display when flying the stealth bomber. It will have flight plan, nav aid, airport, VOR, and much more information present on it, as required by the pilot. Starting at the top left, the GS will be your ground speed. You have the current time to next tuned waypoint or steer point, just to the right of that. Your currently tuned heading bug, currently mine is three zeros as I have not tuned anything. You'll have an option to change the track from aircraft up to north up. Below that is the current time and a time zone indicator. In the top right you have your currently tuned course heading, and then just below that is the option to increase or decrease the range of the HSD as required. The synthetic TACAN and ILS buttons are non-functional. The NAV button will take you to the primary MFD located at the top just above this. To the left are some steer point information, your bearing to the waypoint, and then distance. Data will bring you to a separate page that gives you some more in-depth aircraft position information. To get back to the HSD, you can press STAT at the bottom and then HSD in the bottom left. The DCN button is also non-functional. And in the bottom left, you have your TACAN information, your currently tuned TACAN, and then the distance to it. The TACAN, ILS, localizer, and TSD buttons on the left do not function at this time either. Looking at the inner point of the HSD, your current heading is in a white box at the top, overlaid on top of a heading circle. You can see the location of the heading bug and the course bar in the middle, along with a basic range ring and some airport and nav information. Your flight plan line and waypoints will appear on set over the HSD if you have it tuned. Moving up, you have your primary flight display. As mentioned, you can get to this by clicking NAV in the HSD. If you ever lose it, that's where you should go. On the left side, you have various speed information, your indicated airspeed, your ground speed, Mach, auto throttle tuned airspeed, and then below that, your G-force and scratch pad. In the middle, you have an attitude indicator, bank angle, water line, flight path marker, heading bar along the top, and right out below. Your side slip indicator is at the bottom. Just to the right of that is your currently tuned VOR frequency, and then your angle of attack indicator. Above that is your barometric altitude and the autopilot selected altitude. This option can be controlled from the flight data panel on the bottom left. We covered the CID pages previously in the overview video, and all their information is pretty simple and self-explanatory, so we're not going to go over it again. Instead, we'll skip straight forward to the DEP or data entry processor. The Data Entry Processor, or DEP, as stated, is much similar to an airliner FMC and functions mostly the same in-game. There are certain combat systems that are found in the DEP and the reward aircraft, but given the lack of reference to them, they have not been included. There are a few key pages in the DEP, some of them repeated by different buttons, so we'll go over them now. SATC is a repeat of the COM page. The COM button will take you to said COM page. NAV will give you your navigation data, such as VORs and TACAN. An important note is that when entering a TACAN frequency, make sure to include the relevant letter beside your number. For example, if entering 70X-ray, make sure you enter the X before selecting the frequency. You can also choose your departure and arrival airports, and relevant procedures for both. IFF gives you your transponder data, letting you set the mode and squawk frequency. Performance and RNAV are both repeats of the same autopilot menu where you can control your primary autopilot. The flight plan button will give you your currently set flight plan and all the waypoints that it contains. Weapons currently only has the option to open or close the weapons bay doors. Index is another repeat of the comm page. And then power does not do anything at this time. You have two up and down arrow keys which are mainly used to cycle the pages in the flight plan menu. Just above those is a large brightness knob to control the brightness of the DEP. And then also, you have your key and alpha pad. This is used to enter various information to the scratch pad to enter into relevant sections of the DEP. Your numbers 1 through 9 and 0 function as you would expect. The minus sign can be used to add negative integers and will also be used to delete information from the flight plan page as required. The period key will be used when tuning certain communication and navigation frequencies. 
It's important to specify this in your frequency, otherwise the DEP may not accept it. You have your alphabet, A through Z, as you would expect, and then a plus, slash, question mark, pound, and comma symbol. These do not currently really have much use, but you may be able to find some place to use them. The SPC button is the space button, if you need to add any spaces to your scratchpad entry. And then CLR, or clear, will clear your current scratchpad entry. Before we end, let's go over an example of how to enter a custom flight plan into the DEP. We're on the ramp here at Whiteman Air Force Base, and we're going to plan a flight out to Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam in Hawaii. The first thing we'll do is come over to the nav page, where you can find an origin and destination box at the top of the display. For our origin, we'll go ahead and enter KSCL, which should populate in just a second. Good. And then PHNL as our destination. We'll come back to the departure and arrival information shortly. I have a list of a few example waypoints for this flight that I'll use to demonstrate entering a flight plan. Now to enter a waypoint, it is similar to what you would expect to do in an airliner. We will type in the waypoint name, in this case the VUR BUM, and then click the side button next to our arrival airport to insert this waypoint between the two. As you can see, it populated between our departure and arrival airports, and we also have the bearing between the points listed. Next, we'll enter waypoint Kento. Once again, click in the side button next to PHNL. If you want to insert another waypoint before Kento, then you would press the side button next to it. As an example, entering waypoint Varner. If you get to the point where you have filled out the first page, simply press the up arrow to cycle to the next one. If a certain waypoint is invalid, it will simply disappear when you enter it in. Or, if you accidentally enter a waypoint incorrectly and wish to remove it, simply press the minus key and the side button next to the waypoint you wish to remove. Finally, once we have everything we want, we can enter our departure and arrival procedures. Normally, if we were departing from an airport that has valid SIB procedures, we could select one with this departures button, but Whiteman, being a military airfield, does not have this in the sim. These, along with the waypoints, are drawn from the simulator's database, so it is all subject to what is included with the game. Our destination, Honolulu, does have arrival information. We will select the Kena 3 arrival, and then runway 08 left with the transition at waypoint DENS. Then, if we click Activate, and then go into the flight planning page, you can see it has populated our arrival procedure at the end of our entered flight plan, and before the arrival airport. In the case that certain waypoints or procedures don't enter correctly from the DEP when they should, you can also attempt to use the G3000 that is built into the EFB. You can also load flight plans in from the world map using services like SimBrief or programs like Little LittleNavMap. And that about covers it for the B2's avionics. This should give you a pretty good idea what's in store in this aircraft and prepare you to operate it yourself. See the next video for an in-depth and brief version of the startup and shutdown procedures for the aircraft, which should further help you in learning the B2 and getting it into the air.